Hello, welcome to my presentation about uh, a business that I worked at called Venue of the Grove. And today we'll be talking about the uh, quality of management issues that the place has. So we'll be, we'll be giving an introduction about what I'll be talking about, identification of a major issue going on in the company, potential ramifications of that issue, the effects that it has on the organizational structure of the company. Uh, we'll discuss the how the issues the company's having relate to co conscious capitalism and how it's unable to really fit into the conscious capitalism model because of the issues that they're having. Uh, we'll talk about how to change it in eight steps, challenges of those changes, what we learned, and we'll conclude. So an introduction to the venue at the Grove is a wedding venue in South Phoenix. Uh, the idea be came from uh, two engineers that had a passion for people and giving them experiences to remember for a lifetime. So they quit their engineering jobs, bought a couple acres in South Phoenix, and then created this wedding venue. I was hired on as an event designer and worked there for about four months in 2017 after transitioning out from the military. And in those four months, I was responsible for approximately 72 events, bringing in about one and a half million dollars of revenue. So in four months, you can see that this company is bringing in, like I said, about a million and a half dollars. So it's constantly having people come through. There's a ton of events going on all the same, all the time. So it's a very uh, busy company. And what I noticed in the issues, the main issue that this place has is the quality of management and their leadership. In my personal experience, I was the only one on staff with an expert knowledge in event design and hospitality. So I received my undergraduate degree in hotel and restaurant management with an emphasis on event management. Whereas the two CEOs were engineers that graduated from ASU. And then my boss was also an engineer who had no experience in event or wedding design or anything in hospitality. And so it was frustrating for me because I had legitimate ideas based on my schooling and past experiences on how to make changes that would be more efficient, uh, potentially make more money, how to restructure things. So as I said before, like things would be more efficient and those ideas fell on deaf ears. I was talked down to about trying to change those issues. And one of the issues that they said I had was that my sales goals were not met. But as I said in the previous slide, I was hired as an event designer and not a sales, not in sales management. So there was kind of a lack of identity on what they wanted my position to be, what I wanted my position to be, and that all stemmed from the quality of the management and the leadership that we had. Why is this an issue? Speaking more to more than just my personal experiences, uh, it resulted in employee turnover. So before I started, the entire staff had turned over. They had either fired or the staff had quit. The entire wait staff, the executive chefs, sous chefs, and uh, the event managers. They started with a whole new staff. And according to the uh, Society of Human Resource Management, Jill and Kennedy, the average cost of hiring someone new to a company is about $4,000. That comes from anywhere involving um, the time it takes to go through all the applications, time it takes to actually hold the interviews. It's a substantial amount of money. So you can imagine if the leadership is resulting in this employee turnover, how that $4,000 is just compounding with every new hire. Um, it also has a negative relationship with uh, employee happiness and fulfillment. And so the effect of poor leadership and management is directly linked to the employee's psychological well-being. So that has to do with stress management, the desire to go to work every single day, and it's it, it just wasn't there. So people who were originally tied to the company and had a identified with the company, because of the leadership and the management, they didn't care 
if they started to not care if the company failed. So they wouldn't have a problem no-showing on events, <clears throat> calling out for a week, week and a half, and just not caring, which would put stress on the rest of the staff, and they would have, in turn, had the same effect. And so as you can see, if the leadership and management continues in the way that it's continuing, the company's reputation will start to falter because the people won't, the customers won't be having these unique experiences and the experiences that the company wants to have. And so in the wedding community, everybody's gonna start talking about the company and the, not only will the reputation start to follow, falter, but less and less people will start to book and it will essentially kill the company. Um, the organizational structure of the company itself was made up of about 20 wait staff. We had two sous chefs, one is executive chef, one event designer, which was me, and then I had an assistant. We had one director of operations and then two CEOs. As I said, how this affects the organizational structure, the biggest thing was turnover. So as you can see, to turn over and rehire and go through the interview process to rehire a whole new team of the 20 wait staffs and everyone, that's about 25 different people. And so that in and of itself ends up costing about $100,000 to with the $4,000 compounding with every single person. Like I said, it costs about $100,000 to redo the whole structure of the team. There was a lack of trust within the organization. So my assistant and I were looked down upon by the wait staff because it looked like we weren't doing our job when it was things that the management wanted to have done. And being a conscious leader myself, I couldn't say, oh, well, it's all the manager's fault. I had to do the best I could with my team, but there were things that just weren't working out. And then um, that $100,000 could have been reinvested uh, in different, more land, different equipment, infrastructure, and we could have used it to buy or to fund having extra staff taking the burden off myself and my assistant, but we had to use it to rehire everybody. And then a lack of professional identity. They, when I was working there, they weren't just a wedding venue. They also did dinners and baby showers and bridal showers and a lot of different things. And they wanted to have this broad identity of just this exquisite event company, but that didn't have a specific identity. It was just, we throw great parties, essentially. And looking and doing the research now, it looks like they've molded it down to just a, a wedding venue, but that was a significant problem while I was working there. Discussing how this issue affects the company in a conscious capitalism uh, kind of way, it's unable to contribute to the bigger picture. Where the company was so focused on the problems that the poor leadership and managers were making, that it was essentially trying to fight a wildfire with a small household fire extinguisher. You would put out one little fire and a whole nother fire would start. Um, and because of that, we were unable to contribute to the bigger picture. We were unable to take funds and earmark them and put them into charitable foundations um, and give back to the community. There was no employee development either. There was, in our office, there was a little chalkboard wall and everybody had to write one goal that they had. Um, but short of that, the managers didn't check in with any of the wait staff. Uh, my bosses didn't in, uh, check in on me and you know, continuing education, nothing like that. And so they were unable to perform toward the entire stakeholder integration. They were so focused on their customers that the employees were kind of left out to dry. And without caring for the employees, the company is unable to serve, align, and integrate the interests of all of their major stakeholders. Uh, a big foundation of conscious capitalism is being able to focus on all of the stakeholders, and that includes the employees and the managers in the company itself. So it's, the company was focused so much on the customers, the leadership and managers were leaving the employees on the back burner. So they weren't caring that we were overworked, they weren't caring that we were stressed and not identifying with the company anymore. 
and they had this grand plan of enhancing the customer's lives with their events, but when the employees are starting to not buy into the company vision because they're being treated poorly, then that vision for the customers cannot be delivered. So this is Dr. Cotter's eight-step uh, change diagram, and while all of the steps are important, urgency, building a guiding coalition, forming a vision, enlisting the army, <clears throat> enabling action by removing barriers, generate short-term wins, sustaining acceleration, and then instituting change. For the changes that I would like to see with the company, uh, I'm focusing on the sense of urgency, forming a new vision, and then generating short-term wins. Uh, the other steps, while they're still important, I believe that those ones are the most important. So as far as creating the sense of urgency, the CEOs needed to realize that the current path of the company was not sustainable and that the catastrophic consequences were possible. If the con company continued the way it was, it was eventually going to fail. So that needs to be the sense of urgency that these changes need to be made now or the company is going to fail. And I think the second step of generating a new vision, it needs to value the employees as much as the customers. So I would like to see a company that, yes, focusing on enhancing customers' lives with these events and making it the best day of their life is great, but the company also needs to take care of their employees and hold us an equal, um, equal share in the employees' well-being as well. And then the short-term wins involve employee de development, continuing ed education, and staff increases. If the employees are able to see that hey, we want to send you to, to this training or this seminar or this um, XYZ. We want to give you tuition reimbursement. We want to make you a better person. If we're able to check those boxes and start doing those things, the employees are going to buy into the company a lot more. And those short-term wins are going to help everybody form that professional identity again. So there are two options for how to overcome the challenge of the quality of leadership. And it's, it comes down to either educating the leadership or getting new leadership. Under getting new leadership, my boss, the director of operations, was only my boss because she applied for the job that I had 30 days before I did. So as I said, the entire staff had turned over before I got there. So she applied for a vacancy the same way I did. And because she wanted a new life, she was an engineer, she, um, she got the vacancy before I did and they needed a boss, so they used her. The challenges of educating the leadership, um, the biggest thing is lab time, as quoted by Fitzgerald. It's a leadership offsite meeting in order to realign the vision of the company. So take everybody offsite for a day, two days, three days a week, um, because in the hectic environment of a failing company, it's impossible to get to a quiet place and have the employees come up with these new ideas on how to save what they need to save. However, that week out of the office is equitable to thousands of dollars in revenue loss because if somebody's not in the office doing their job, then that job is not getting done. And the other challenge with that is that it might not be effective. Uh, the employee or the manager has to buy in and just sending them off site for a week, it might not be effective. It's uh, kind of a gamble. And then the challenge of getting new leadership, if we were to do a leadership turnover, um, the, the hiring process is gonna be the most difficult challenge there because according to Hill and Kennedy, the average day of holding a vacancy in a job is 42 days. So that goes from the day the job is posted to gathering all the applicants, the rounds of interviews, um, and if the same way as if we're offsite for a week, if somebody's obviously not doing that job in the office, somebody's gonna have to pick up that slack. Somebody else is gonna have to and again, it might not be effective. We might make one leader go away or one poor leader go away and just hire another one. So the, the hiring process would have to be very intense and make sure that our goals and visions align with the applicants. And if I were in charge, if I were building this organization for the things that I would want to, uh, from my values, the biggest thing would be just caring about my employees. I, Care about people because people are worth caring about. Um, it's just as simple as that. It's not my job 
to reach out to the clients and the customers in my organization, it's going to be my employees. My job is my employees and their well-being. Uh, the foundational value of an organization is in its employees, and they'll be the focus. It's I want to endeavor to create financial, intellectual, social, cultural, emotional, spiritual, and psychological, physical, and ecological well-being for all the stakeholders, and that includes my employees. Um, like I said, for all of because without the employees, the job's not going to get done. And if the job's not going to get done, then there's no point in having an organization. Concluding, these are the different things that we talked about. Um, as I said, the major issue that we were talking about with Venue at the Grove was, in fact, the quality of the leadership and the managers and how they were very focused on enhancing everybody's life, but they did not focus on enhancing their employees' lives. These are the references that I used.